This video is on negating statements. So given a statement R, not R or tilde R is the negation of R. And the negation of R can often be written in a more simple or useful form. Uh, so for example, we use truth tables to see that not P or Q, not P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. And similarly, uh, we saw that um, not P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. So um, negating statements is especially important uh, because as we do proof techniques later in the course, such as proof by contrapositive, proof by contradiction, or disproof with a counterexample, um, it'll be very important to find the exact logical equivalence of the negation of a statement. So um, let's start with uh, an example. Uh, let's say we have, there is a quiz on Monday or on Friday. So that's an or statement. Um, there is a quiz on Monday or Friday. Um, we could say, let's let P be the statement, there is a quiz on Monday, and Q be, there is a quiz on Friday. And so then this is a, state, um, a statement of the form P or Q, there is a quiz on Monday or Friday. If we want to negate P or Q, then we know uh, by these, um, these are called De Morgan's laws, De Morgan's laws. Um, we know that the negation of that is not P and not Q. So uh, we could write that as uh, there is, so if it's not, tr if P is not true, then there is not a quiz on Monday there is not a quiz on Monday, and there is not a quiz on Friday. We could write it in that form. And, or we could also write it, um, there is neither a quiz on Monday nor on Friday. Um, writing it either way would work, but either of those is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. Uh, so I'd like you to try an example. Um, what if we want to negate there is a quiz on Monday and there is a quiz on Friday? So give this one a try, pause, and try this one out quickly. So if we want to negate the statement, there is a quiz on Monday and there is a quiz on Friday, then again, this is a statement of the form P and Q. There is a quiz on Monday, P, and there is a quiz on Friday, Q. We're negating that statement. So again, by De Morgan's laws, this is equivalent to not P or not Q. Um, so that means uh, the negation of P, there is a quiz on Monday, that's P, there is a quiz on Friday, that's Q. The negation of that, <clears throat> there is not a quiz on Monday, or there is not a quiz on Friday. would be the negation of that entire statement. Uh, so, or separating them. And again, with De Morgan's laws, if we negate a statement of the form with an and or an or, uh, that's equivalent to flipping the signs and negating each of them separately. So um, now I'd like you to try these two. Uh, negate the statement at least one of the set, or it's really an open sentence because we don't know what the, um, sets A and B are, but we want to negate the open sentence. At least one of the sets A and B is finite, and I'd also like you to negate the open sentence, neither of the numbers X and Y are rational. So um, pause, try each of those out, and we'll talk about them together. All right, at least one of the sets A and B is finite. So the first thing we want to do is sort of just try to think logically, what is the structure of this sentence? At least one of is always an or. At least one of means A is finite, or B is finite, or both are finite. So if you wish, you could you know, rewrite this thing that we want to negate. So we're trying to negate at least one of. So A is finite, A is less than infinity, or B is less, the cardinality of B is less than infinity. So that's the like an equivalent logical structure to what we are trying to negate. We're trying to negate A is finite or B is finite 
which we could write as the cardinality of A is less than infinity, or the cardinality of B is less than infinity. Now, by de Morgan's laws, this is equal to um, the negation of the first piece, negation of uh, A is finite, and flip the sign, B is finite, uh, negation of B is finite. So this is equivalent to negation of the first and negation of the second. Now we still want to simplify this. Um, at this point we are not done, like that answer would give you partial credit. We still want to negate each of those individual pieces. So um, negation of the set A is finite. Well, if A is not finite, then the cardinality of A is infinity, and the cardinality of B is infinity. And so we could write our statement like that if we wished, or we could write it in words. Um, so A, uh, the set A is infinite, and the set B is infinite. So that would be the negation of the statement above. Um, next, neither of the numbers x and y are rational. So neither of them is rational. That means that x is not rational and y is not rational. So we want the negation of um, x is not an element of the rational numbers and y is not an element of the rational numbers. So that's what we are trying to negate. Um, so if we're trying to negate that, again with De Morgan's laws, we can negate each of them separately. The negation of x is not an element of the rational numbers, um, or the negation of y is not an element of the rational numbers. Um, so we're negating each of them separately. We're switching and to or. That's equivalent to the negation of x is not a rational number is x is a rational number, or y is a rational number. Um, and so, uh, so we could leave it like that. Um, we could also write it in words. Um, we could say at least one of x and y is rational. Or we could also write it as x is rational or y is rational. Um, now I'd like you to try um, to negate a statement of a form we have not seen before, or in terms of negations. Um, so I'd like you to try negating this statement. For every real number x, x squared is positive. Um, so that right there is just x squared um, for every real number x, x squared is positive. Um, so I'd like you to try negating that statement. Um, think about what the absolute negation of that statement is. Uh, try it out and we will talk about this together. Okay, so we want to negate the statement for every real number x, x squared is positive. So let's think about when this is false. And we want to include all the possible scenarios where this is false. So we're trying to negate this for every real number x, x, is, x squared is positive. Um, so uh, for all, or it's the same as for every, x in r, um, x squared is greater than zero. That is false if it's false for at least one of them. So for all x in r, blah, 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 is false if it's false for at least one x in r. So false for at least one x in R. In other words, um, that is, it's false if there exists some x in the real numbers such that x squared is less than or equal to zero. So that tells us that the negation of, for all x in the real numbers, x squared is greater than zero is there exists some x in the real numbers such that x squared is less than or equal to zero. Or in other words, um, there is some, there is some 
x in the real numbers where x squared is less than or equal to zero. Um, so incidentally, uh, which of these initial statements is true? So um, is our original statement or the negation true? Um, let's see, is it true that for any x in the real numbers, x squared is greater than zero? Well, no, there is a real number x, and that real number is zero, where um, x is in, or uh, x equals zero, is an element of the real numbers, and um, x squared equals zero, which is less than or equal to zero. So that means that our original statement was false and its negation is true. Now I want to just talk about a common mistake with negating a statement of this form. So um, a common error is the following. Um, a common error would be to say that the negation of um, for any x in the real numbers, x squared is greater than zero, would be um, that for any x in the real numbers, uh, x squared is not greater than zero. So x squared is less than or equal to zero. That's a common mistake. And this is not the negation. Uh, let's see why that's true. So the negation of a statement should be the full complement of the statement. So the negation of um, some statement S is the complement of S, the complement of S. It's, it should include all ways for S to be false. So should include all ways for s to be false. And let's just think about, you know, okay, so um, if we have like our universe of possible truths um, and we say uh, one of them is the thing we started with for all x in the real numbers, x squared is greater than zero. And then we have this other um, idea that is not quite the negation. Um, for all x in the real numbers, uh, x squared is less than or equal to zero. Does that include all possible things that could be true? So basically, when we have a statement and its complement, it should be that either one is true or the other is true, but not both. Exactly one of those statements must be true. But here we have things like, um, you know, x is in, or uh, 3 is in the real numbers, and 3 squared is greater than 0. So great, that's a point for this. Uh, but 0 is in the real numbers, and 0 squared is less than or equal to 0. Well, that would be a point for that. Um, you know, uh, this, is, this is clearly not working, right? It should be that one of those is true, but not both are true, and not neither are true, right? So this is not all possible ways for the original statement S to be false. So if we want the entire picture, the entire complement of uh, for all x in R, for any real number x, x squared is greater than zero, what encapsulates all possible ways that that could be false? There is some x in the real numbers such that x squared is uh, less than or equal to zero. Now I'd like you to try another one. I'd like you to try negating a, the statement there is an integer n such that 2 to the n is 60 or 2 to the nth power is 60. Try negating that statement. All right, uh, there is an integer n such that 2 to the n is 60. So if this is not true, then that means uh, there is no integer n such that 2 to the n is 60, right? So one way to say that is um, there is no integer 
n such that 2 to the n is 60. Um, here again, I would consider this not done. Um, we still sort of have to twist around and say there is no integer n such that 2 to the n is 60. What does that mean exactly? Um, so if it's the case that none of the integers have this property, then to carry the negation all the way through, that would be saying for any integer n, 2 to the n is not equal to 60. So that's carrying the, the, the negation all the way through so that this is a little bit um, easier to digest. Um, so let's just think about that structurally. We were negating something of the form there exists an n in the integers such that 2 to the n equals 60. If we're negating that, the negation of that is for any integer n, um, 2 to the n is not equal to 0, or to, oh, 60, uh, 2 to the n is not equal to 60. Uh, for any integer n, the negation of this original statement, 2 to the n equals 60. And um, that is for any n in the integers, for any integer n, 2 to the n is not equal to 60. And uh, that's this and this are the same thing. Um, so in general, um, if we want to negate a for all statement, then that's going to give us a there exists statement. So uh, the negation of for any x in a set S, p of x is true. The statement p is true about x. The negation of that statement is there is some x in this set such that p of x is false. And similarly, the negation of a uh, there exists statement is a uh, for all statement. So the negation for all. Um, so the negation of there exists some x in the set s such that p of x is true, such that the statement p is true about x, the negation of that statement is for every x in that set, p of x is false. Um, so um, with those things in mind, uh, here's another one to try. For any real number x, there is a real number y such that x plus y is equal to zero. So pause and think about what the negation of that statement is. All right, for any real number x, there is a real number y such that x plus y equals zero. So we want to negate, um, now I'm gonna rewrite this with our um, logical symbols. So for any real number x, for any x in the real numbers, there is, there exists a y in the real numbers such that x plus y is equal to zero. So let's think about negating this from, you know, from left to right, basically from the outside in. Um, so we first are negating a for all statement. When we negate a for all statement, that means that it turns into a there exists statement, right? So there exists an x in the real numbers such that, and now um, we are going to negate the inside. So just negating it one step at a time, such that it is not true that there is a y in the real numbers, such that x plus y is equal to zero. So uh, we're just using that first rule above that the negation of a for all statement is um, there exists some element of that set such that the negation of the next piece. Um, so now we're gonna continue going inward and say, okay, that's equal to or equivalent to, there is some x in the real numbers such that, now what's the negation of a there exists statement? That would be for any y in the real numbers and now negation of whatever's next. Now, what's this? This is negation of x plus y equals zero. And now uh, one more step. There is an x in the real numbers such that for any y in the real numbers, um, negation of x plus y equals zero, x plus y is not equal to zero. And so then if we want to translate that back to our usual everyday English, we could say um, this is the equivalent to there is some x in the real numbers, some real number x such that 
um, for any y in the real numbers x plus y is not equal to zero. Uh, so that would be the negation of our original statement. Now we know that for any statement, either the original statement or its negation must be true and not both. So um, let's just say, you know, which of these is true in this case? Um, so here we've got uh, this statement, its negation, and the original statement. Um, so is this true, is the negation true? There is some x, so we fix x. Is it the case that for any y in the real numbers, um, x plus y is not equal to zero? Uh, well, no, we could let um, y be the opposite of x, the negative x. Um, if x is zero, then negative zero is just zero. And then that means that uh, x plus y is equal to zero. So that tells us that this is false down here. It is not the case that there is some real number x such that for any y in the real numbers, x plus y is not equal to zero because we can find one such that it is. But up here, um, for any real number x, there is a real number y such that x plus y equals zero. Is that true? Yes. Um, so for any real number x, uh, given x, then negative y is in the real numbers, and x plus y is equal to zero. That is true. Um, so the original statement here was true. All right, uh, let's do one more. And this is, again, a somewhat unfamiliar form for us in terms of negations. We haven't seen something exactly of this form. If x is an integer, then x squared is a natural number. So I'd like you to try negating this. Um, as a hint, recall that any implies statement is logically equivalent to a universal statement for all. So think about whether you can use what we've done previously to negate this. Okay, so we want to negate the statement, if x is an integer, then x squared is a natural number. So um, as we said, we could write that as, um, you know, x is an integer implies x squared is a natural number, implies x squared is in the natural numbers. Um, so that's just the original statement, not the negation. And um, we know that an if then, an if then, or an implies statement is equivalent to a for all statement. So we could rewrite this as for any x in the integers, um, x squared is in the natural numbers. So these two statements are logically equivalent to one another, and therefore their negations are logically equivalent to one another too. So if we want to negate a for all statement, then that's the same thing as doing a there exists statement. The negation of a for all is a there exists x in the integers, such that um, the negation of x squared is in the natural numbers. And uh, when we complete the negation, there exists an x in the integers such that x squared is not in the integers. Um, so uh, if we wanted to write that out in words, um, there is some integer x such that or where um, x squared is not an integer, or it's not a natural number. Um, so this or the one above, these are both the negations of this original statement. So it seems maybe a little funny that a negation of an if-then statement is not an if-then statement. Um, we will talk about that a little bit more. So the negation of a P implies Q statement is not like any kind of implies statement, but the negation of a P implies Q statement is the negation of P implies Q is a statement of the form um, P and not Q. So let's just see how that worked here. Um, here, our 
p was x is an element of the integers, our q was x, is an, x squared is an element of the natural numbers. Here, there is some integer x such that, so x is in, so this is a situation where x is in the integers, such that x squared is not a natural number, so and x squared is not an element of the natural numbers. So this was really of the form p and not q. p and not q. That was the negation of p implies q. Um, so to drive this forward a little bit more, uh, let's just think about the truth tables that go with this and agree with ourselves that these two, um, that these two expressions are logically equivalent, the negation of p implies q and p and not q. Let's show that those are logically equivalent through a truth table. So um, let's first look on the right hand side. We've got our p being true and false, q being true and false, all possible combinations. When is p implies q true and false? So if p is true and q is true, then yes, true. If we have a true thing implying a false thing, that is false. And recall that if p is false, then whatever follows from p is automatically true. Um, if I am elected, I will buy everyone ice cream. Well, I didn't get elected, so no matter what happens, I buy you ice cream or I don't, the original statement is true. The promise that I made does not need to be fulfilled because I was not elected. So the only place where p implies q is false is when p is true and q is false. So uh, what's the negation of p implies q? That's just the opposites. So here it's true, therefore there it's false. Here it's false, therefore here it's true. False, false. We're just changing from true to false and false to true. All right, now let's look at not q. Not q is false when q is true and true when q is false, so that's those. p and not q, p and not q. So here do we have p and not q? No, not q is false, so the and is false. Here they are both true, we've got true and true, so yes this is true. Here we've got false and false, so this is false. Here we've got true and false, so this is false. And now we see that these two statements or these two logical expressions match. They are false at the same time and true at the same time. And because of that, these are logically equivalent. So the negation of p implies q is p and not q. I want to stick with this a little longer because um, it's really common to have an incorrect negation of an implies statement. Um, specifically, the negation of an implies statement cannot be another implies statement. Uh, so this is important to keep in mind. So it's a very common mistake to think that uh, the negation of p implies q is not p implies not q, or p implies not q, or not q implies or not p implies q, uh, like one of those three things. Um, probably this is the most common above them common of them, uh, but no, this is not the negation, no, this is not the negation, and no, this is not the negation. None of those can be the negation. Here is why. So let's just start with um, what I think is the most common of these, uh, p implies not q. So we already, you know, did the truth table for the negation of p implies q. Um, now let's think about um, p implies not q. So p implies not q here true thing implying a false thing, that is false. Here, true implying true, true. Here, false implying false and false implying true. Um, well, again, if the first piece is false, then the entire statement is true. Um, if I'm elected, then I'll buy you ice cream. If the person is not elected, they don't have to do anything, like there's nothing to follow through on because the first half of the promise was not fulfilled. Um, so we have false, true, true, true in our truth table for p implies q. Now let's see how these um, you know, match up. False, false, great. True, true, excellent. 
false, true, no, that does not match, false, true, no, that does not match. So the big, so that means that these are uh, not logically equivalent, not logically equivalent. So the big takeaway here is that, as I said above, the negation of a P implies Q statement cannot be another implies statement. Why is that definitively true? If we have two variables, um, then any, um, you know, S implies T, whatever it is, has three true places and one false place. Um, no matter what those variables are, if they're P or Q or not P or not Q or whatever, um, something that is an implies statement is going to have one false where the first variable was true and the second was false, and all the rest will be true both when they are both true and when the first piece is false. So here are three trues, one false. Whereas the negation of an implied statement has the opposite, has um, three falses and one true, and it can never be that these match up, right? Here we have three trues, one false. Here we have three false, one true. They can never align. So this is all to say that the negation of an implies statement is never an implies statement, no matter how you mix it up.